Um, so you were saying of something about the posters that you know what you see in the posters may be different than what the media is saying. Can you elaborate on that? Um, I, I have I have heard things and seen images on the media that that uh, I think give a little misinformation that women don't have some of the rights that I see here that they actually do have, mm -hmm. uh, such as the right to initiate divorce, keep your last name. Um, I, I had I had thought that there were more restrictions on women. Compared um, to what and, is the reality, right? Right, and I, mean, I see, uh, I think education is, is emphasized more than I thought it would be. Okay, I'm here at the Islamic Center of DeKalb with the Sister Janine, right? And we are having a mosque open house. Uh, first and foremost, we want to welcome you. It's our honor that you are here, our fellow Americans, fellow brothers and sisters are here. So you came with your family. Yes, yes. <laughs> It is so important, especially not just for us, our youth to understand. And next to me, sister Michelle. So, how did you hear about this open house? Um, I'm, I'm the executive director with the DeKalb County History Center, and I met with one of the people that belongs here, Manal. And um, at the History Center, we're trying to do a better job of gathering the history of all the people that live in DeKalb County and the Muslim community is certainly one of the communities and so I just came here today to learn some more and um, to continue that dialogue so we can help document your history in our community. Wonderful and I was mentioning to you and others one of the purpose we are having this open house is to make sure that people may have many questions about Islam about our history our contributions and sometimes there may be misconceptions based upon what they see in the media, what they see some uh, uneducated people doing. So we want to make our fellow Americans, our brothers and sisters realize that there are so many things in common that we have. And we want to educate them about the realities of Islam compared to the myths people may have in the books or in the social media. So at the end of the day, we will realize that there are so many commonalities and based upon the commonalities, we can work together to make better societies. So what have you learned so far coming here? Well, I just got here, but um, I have felt very welcome and I'm just excited about this opportunity to, again, to learn more. I think that's um, our job too. Um, so I yes. think we're both on the same page is that the, the more we get to know each other, the better off that we'll be. So welcome, come back over here again and let's work together for better societies. Wonderful, thank you so much for having us today. Okay, thanks Michelle for coming, take care. And you were mentioning something about the posters that you saw about women in Islam. Oh, right. <laughs> so, they're beautiful, first of all. <laughs> so, um, but I, um, I admin a couple of different Facebook, quite a few Facebook groups around the area. One being Hate Has No Home Here. The other one, um, DeKalb County takes the United Stand Against Hate. And I would love to share those flyers in the, uh, both of those Facebook groups so that people can have more exposure who weren't able to come today. So why do you think, uh, what about the contents in that poster that wants you to share them to other people? Um, I think it's just, it makes it more personal because the, the media makes everything seem so terrifying and they want to polarize everybody against everything. This brings it home and makes it familiar and it's very short little details about people and I think they're perfect, they're beautiful. Anything specific that you saw in the posters that you want to share? Um, so, so I love the part, I grew up Catholic, and um, I love the part about Mary and making that be um, just a part of, of both religions, you know what I mean, how it can bring people together, and uh, we have a lot of the same belief systems, and we're not as different as the media would like us to think that we are. You know? Exactly. If there is like one message you want to share with our fellow Americans, you know, people have so many misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Not every person may come here today, so what would you say to them about your experience here? I think it's been fascinating. Everybody's been so welcoming and so friendly and uh, just kind of give people a, a chance to get to know your neighbors and get to know, you know, maybe they can become your friends. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Have a seat. And we have a guest, our neighbor, who came here to visit the mosque and we are so honored to have her here. And what's your name, ma'am? Linda Kerr. Okay, we have Sister Linda over here. And you are one of the first people to come here and uh, you mentioned that you saw the posters mm -hmm. and these posters are about women in Islam. So some of the rights that Islam has given to women, um, as you mentioned, the right to gain education, it's not just a right in Islam, it's an obligation. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, who we consider as the last and the final prophet, uh -huh. uh, he mentioned that it's an obligation for both males and females to gain education. So getting empowered by that obligation, that education, you'll be surprised to find out that women of the past, Muslim ladies, mm -hmm. 
They were the initiators of hospitals, pharmacists, and universities. I heard that. Yes. That a Muslim woman started the first university. Is that correct? Yes. According to the Guinness Book of World Records uh -huh. and UNESCO, the oldest continuous university in the entire world, its foundation was laid by a Muslim lady. And where was this? This is in Morocco, in the city of Fez, okay. uh, in the year 859. Uh -huh. And the name of the campus, I'm not sure if it's here, uh, University of Harawain. Okay. Way before Harvard and Oxford and Penn there, State. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, right over there. here. There you go, yes. Okay. Okay. See, these are the facts. People may not know it. So one of the reasons we are having the open house is to educate our fellow Americans, our brothers and sisters, you know. Realities compared to the myths sometimes the media propagates for their own, you know, purpose. Right, right. I've already learned quite a few things from, from the tour. And the, the woman who was giving the tour, uh, I work at the high school as, yeah. as a teacher, and she's an ex-student of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really easy to, to talk to her and ask her questions. Um, and I've already learned okay. a lot. So how did you hear about uh, from your student? She's the one who invited you? Um, actually, on, on social media, on Facebook, um, someone posted this. Wonderful. And I've always, I, I've driven by this building and thought how pretty it is. And I see Muslim students at school, and I wonder more and more about the religion and about what, what happens here. So do you think that, uh, you know, Muslims need to, like, have more open houses like this? Yes, I do. <laughs> you know? I do. I think... Um, there, there'd be more, more understanding and more and less, yeah, less confusion. Um, and and I'm not sure. I, I'm sure there are incidents of, of some prob, some some hate groups or some, people not understanding. I've heard that someone was a, was attacked at one of the grocery store, one of the women. Um, and I think if they knew more about, the religion and and what you guys stand for, um, well, I think it, it's needed. So not only the misconceptions will go, people will find out there are so many commonalities we have. There are, yeah. As Americans, as people of faith, as believers in God, and as humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that. Mm -hmm. yeah, as you can see yeah. the posters all around here, uh, you know, we have for prophets of God, which are common also to Judaism, Christianity, yeah. and Islam, right there. Uh -huh. Then the books that uh, our Jewish and the Christian brothers and sisters that they believe in, we as Muslims, we are also supposed to believe those in those books in their original form, mm -hmm. given to Moses and David and Jesus and Abraham, peace be upon them. So um, if there and, is and one... I like, the, I like the fact that education is an obligation, and uh, I've already met a woman who's a, who's a doctor here. Um, yeah, exactly. Is, oh, really? <laughs> yes. Okay. She was yeah. a pediatrician uh, in Pakistan. Okay, all yes. right. So women are highly educated and... You know, compared to what the media shows here, there are more PhD women doctors in Pakistan right. than all over the USA okay. combined. Okay, yes. well, that's impressive. So if there is like one question that you may be thinking, you know what, if I interact with a Muslim, let me ask that question, what would that be? Oh, okay. The, the question that I would ask you about why men and women have to uh, pray in separate rooms yeah. So if I can also elaborate on that question, sure. you know, there is a, in a place of worship, our mind should be focused on God. It should be pure, it should be clean, our heart should be clean. So sometimes if we pray together, men, women, you know, the, the way that we pray, we pray shoulder to shoulder, like literally touching each other. So it will not be appropriate that next to my daughter, if a strange man is, you know, praying next to her. She won't be comfortable. I won't be comfortable, right? right? I understand. That was explained to me, and I understand oh, that. Okay, yeah, okay, and I, yeah, I have been in situations when I when I used to go to church, where uh, there would be distractions like that. We weren't shoulder to shoulder, but sometimes very close. Yes. And uh, and and that's a valid reason. I understand. That. So this is the way Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his mosque used to have. Men used to pray in the area, and women used to have their own area, right? Purity of thought, purity of mind. Even if you go to like a Jewish Orthodox synagogue, they still have separation too. That's true. An Orthodox a Christian church, right. th they also have separation. So, you know, in yeah. a place of worship, purity of thought and mind should yes. be there. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree. That makes sense to me. And you were asking for the food, right? Or what food I, we have? <laughs> I, I love um, Middle Eastern food. Um, uh, so, yeah, and vegetarian food. So I look forward to eating. And maybe okay. getting a henna tattoo. Oh, yes. They're doing that. Very soon so. they'll begin. So if there is one message that you would say to the people, right? Because not uh, 
350 million people may come here in the mosque today. Uh -huh. What would you say to them? Suppose if you have more open houses like this. Uh, that you're very welcoming. It's a beautiful, clean place. Everyone's very friendly and respectful and answering my questions. Um, and, I'm, and I'm coming away with a lot of knowledge. So um, I think you should have more of these. And yeah. we have free copies of the Quran there. I'm not sure if you read the Quran. In English, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, so the original yeah. Quran is in Arabic. Okay. And we have translation in English, uh, I mean, 100 plus languages. Uh -huh. So you're free to take a copy. Okay. We have a lot of brochures. Okay. Take uh, more than one if you want to. And you, you can always come here with your students or with some other teachers. There are many uh, tours that we give okay. in many mosques uh, around the nation. Uh -huh. So you're welcome to come back you know, as a family, as a school, right. individually, and you can just drop in. You don't even have to wait for a mosque open house. Okay, well, that's nice to know. Yeah, I feel very welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, and I uh, hope you enjoy here. I hope you learn here. Ask as many questions as possible. I shall. May God guide and bless all of us. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.